going on dude is this uh, for Cameron Munster what I, thought, the f- I thought I, I thought I'd uh, I'd change things up just for the podcast mate do you like it <laughs> like is a word that I probably wouldn't regularly use mm. with a stupid caterpillar wanna, on the top of someone's lip yeah do you want to help people who aren't watching the podcast understand mm. well if anyone's ever watched any porn from the 70s uh, you look like a guy called Ron Jeremy. I think you're the only bloke that's uh, old enough to have uh, seen that. Yeah, folks, Google Ron Jeremy. No, don't and do that's that. that's water. Don't do that. <laughs> yes, I'm sporting the uh, State of Origin moustache, I'm calling it. So the whole idea is that in playoff hockey, they always grow a beard out through the entire series. I am wearing this moustache until New South Wales win the series. There you go. Okay, that's how, so that's how, that's how confident I, I am we're going to win this year. So, in all honesty, if they don't win the if they don't win the series by next year, you could look like Merv Hughes. That's the aim. The great Mervin. Okay, Mervin. You'll be yeah. you'll be hanging at the Blue Oyster Bar, mate, on weekends uh, if you keep doing that. <laughs> I was shaving <laughs> off the rest of the beer this morning. I went, oh, I'll leave a little surprise for Cocksmith, and uh, you know it's Origin time. He needed something special. Let's get into it. Yeah, certainly special. G'day everyone, was here. Well, Freddie did it to us. <laughs> Recorded the podcast. Game one reactions, which you're about to hear. And then he went and named his actual 1-17 to for New South Wales. So the big differences to what we talked about, because we had a squad to work with, is Hudson Young and Tyson Frizzell are now the edges, and Murray and Martin are back on the bench. And Tavita Pango Jr. apparently will start, and Junior Barlo will be on the bench for the Blues. And the other big news is that Campbell Graham is out, presumably because he's going to be playing for South this weekend, and they've brought in Stephen Crichton as 18th man and Stefano Utkumanu as 19th man. So Slip Dog gets one in, as you'll hear about me later on. But it doesn't hugely affect how we talk about the teams. But thanks, Freddie. <laughs> Enjoy. Good everybody. Welcome to episode 292 of Not The Footy Show. Origin is here. My moustache is here. Rob Cox is here. I'm Warwick Nicholson. And uh, Freddie Fittler. He's made some changes, Cocksmith, that we wanted, but Billy Slater has just swooped in and taken all the headlines because he's done exactly what uh, all of the New South Wales fans who had forgotten how good Tommy Trebojevic was, and he's dumped the best player from last year's Origin Series in Kalen Ponga, and it's on form. I just saw the presser. It's on form. Yeah. Well, is, it, is it on form or oh, is it on... That. The words. Yeah. It. These are the quote. This I is think... the quote. He goes, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I'm comfortable that this is the right decision. This is Reese Walsh over Callum Ponga. For everyone involved, the team and Reese Walsh has been playing fantastic football. I'm comfortable with the decision. He then noted that no more influential player uh, to last year's series was Callum Ponga. But the reason that I've made this decision is because it's about every factor. Every factor. Yeah, so that, that last sentence there, the last two words, is, is kind of telling. It, look, it... Let's cut through the BS for a moment about form. Kalen, Kalen on his day can be as good as anyone in the world. Yep. Problem is, he's got a glass jaw. Okay, he gets knocked out. Mm-hmm. There's a there's a problem. Okay, he gets knocked out, and um, you know most people who know anything about concussions will tell you that the more often you get knocked out, the more often you're going to get knocked out. And he's had a few lately, and it's not great for his career. Although it probably would be more sustainable if the dope of a coach up at Newcastle would put him back to fullback, but he won't. Okay, Alan I said wants to play it. six apparently. Work that well, out. Whatever. Well, whatever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just because you want to do something doesn't mean you should. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'd love to fly to the moon. Probably wouldn't be a great idea. Um, but Reese Walsh is in scary form, mate. Reese Walsh is 
he's an X factor player. He's a dude, you know, he's probably not as consistently, uh, he, he probably doesn't set out to do things like Kalen does, but he's got this scary pace and yeah, unpredictability. Yeah. That is, you, you you know, I don't know if there's anyone quicker over 30, 30 or 40 metres than him in the NRL at the moment. He's he's so quick. Jared Croker's pretty, pretty fast. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, mate, Jared Croker couldn't run out of run out of sight. On the dark uh, night. Just get to 300, Toots. Uh, so Queensland have done what New South Wales are supposed to be doing. That's the headline of the, the Origin 1 teams, is that we get getting told Tommy's too old, as in his legs are too old, he's got bad hamstrings and all the rest of it. And we can't pick him. You were telling me we couldn't pick him. There's been one person who's been consistent. It's the man with the moustache. I just said we can't leave him out. And fortunately for Tommy, fortunately for Freddie, Tommy carved up the Raiders yesterday and looked well. If he didn't, if he played like he played in the, in the previous two games, Tommy ain't getting picked. Campbell Graham would be in the number four jersey. So, uh, but hey, he did. He played great. He, he and really did. It reminded everybody that you just don't leave class out of a team. I, I, I said this to you in a text. I said to a few mates. There are two players in the New South Wales team from the last X amount of years that walk in if they can walk. One is James Tedesco. The other is Tom Trebojevic. It's not Nathan Cleary. It's not Damien Cook, who's been dumped finally uh, by um, Freddie for the game one. It's no other player. It's two players, and it's not Latrell mm. because Latrell didn't want to play last year. So the trail sort of mm. cashed out that 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 chip, and now we're looking scary again. We are looking really scary, Cocksmith, because Queensland have made some changes. Oh. They've left yeah. out some some defensive players that have done a job in the past on our attacking guys, and yeah. we've got rid of the dead weight. And I don't mean that harshly. It's just that you know at Origin level you've got to be able to reach a, a greater height, and we've pushed yeah. the players that couldn't do that last year out, and we've brought the ones that hopefully can in. So. Which team do you want to go through first, mate? We've got New South Wales, we've got Queensland. Which one? Well, let's go through the favourites first, Queensland. <laughs> Look at that. So at fullback, and this is the funny thing, for the last few years, New South Wales would name their team on a Sunday night. We'd see the players turn up at Coogee and the media would get their exclusives and we'd name, we'd just name the team. This is this is a fullback. And Queensland would name their squad the next day at a big luncheon, but they wouldn't name the team. Well, it's reversed now, Cocksmith, because... So the players have named, it's hilarious, an 18-man squad and named their 18th man, but haven't named who's in fullback, who's in centre and all that kind of stuff. Queensland, yeah, well, opposite, they've named 19, yet they've actually named everybody in position. This is their side. But we've we've done the job for Freddie, though, and we've got the team. So <laughs> Exactly right. We've written it down. Play games. Uh, Queensland's team, 1-19, to to is Reese Walsh. Selwyn Cobbo is in for Xavier Coates. Queensland, why didn't you leave him there? We could have gone after him. Uh, Valentine Holmes and Hamaso Tabo Ifido is in the centres. So as we will explore, the matchup centre-wise is very tasty for the Blues. Murray Talangi is on the other wing as they've gone with the Holmes and Tongi combination there for the Cowboys in Queensland. Cameron Munster and Dally Cherry Evans are the halves. The front row is interesting, Cocksmith. It's Thomas Flegler, Ben Hunt and Lindsay Collins. No issues with Ben Hunt there, but just to me, but just we'll pause very quickly. But that seems like a very... I don't want to say underwhelming, but there's just not a lot of star power in that front row for Queensland. Now Papali has gone and and Co is there. Collins and Flagler. Yeah. Uh you know, I, I think he I think Billy's playing a little bit ducks and drakes and with ooh, 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 ooh. I'm we'll not sure. I'm not there. sure. I'm not sure Collins and Flegler are gonna start the game, but I'll tell you Love who it. I think will. Love it. Uh in the second row, Thomas Gilbert and David Fafita has forced his way back in, which if you watched Basically, since Kieran Foran's got to the Titans, David Feeder is David Feeder again. Patrick Carrigan is at lock forward. The bench is Harry Grant, Tino Faasu Malai. I think I got it. Oh, Pretty close. Ruben Cotter, Pretty close. Jai Arrow, and then Tom Dearden and Christian Welsh are the extra players. What stands out to you apart from we've covered off sort of the Walsh and, and Ponga decision, but what else uh, surprises you? Because there are some omissions there for Queensland for, for Warriors that have done the job for them. Yeah, look, I'm I'm happy to see Selwyn come in. I think he's done yeah. enough. Yep. Um, and he's pretty safe under the high ball. He makes pretty good decisions most of the time, and 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 I think he's an asset to them. Uh, Val Holmes is getting a little long in the tooth, and Ooh, Val gosh. Holmes will be mar- who will be, who well, mate, Stafford Tower made yeah. him look silly the other night. Well, we should uh, think Stafford Tower is what you're telling me. No, we've got someone better. Who's he going to be marking? You think? So it'll be Holmes up against Tommy. 
and it'll be mm. uh, Tabu Fido against Latrell. Now, best, if I'm best of luck, boys. Best of <laughs> I'll luck. Tell you what, Holmes, I think was outstanding for us at the World Cup last year, and yeah. he's actually been one of the better players until the weekend when he got run through by Stafford for the Cowboys in a pretty ordinary season. He actually hasn't been bad. I've watched him pretty closely. Uh, but I'm happy to see Telangi there. I don't think he's that good. I was surprised he got picked for Australia last year at the, the World Cup squad. Um, the reason they picked Cobo ahead of Coates and the reason Coates is missed out is his work rate just is not there. And if you're picking Reese Walsh at fullback, you need both wingers to do heaps of work. And yeah. David Coates just doesn't look interested to do hard work. It's, I'm, I, it's, it's brutal, but it's... you. Yeah. The stats back it up. The eye test backs it up. Uh, mm. And if he's not getting the ball in attacking situations, you're hoping for that little kick option. So, And you can mm. get the same thing from Selborne Cobo and he might actually catch the ball. So I understand exactly why um, Billy Slater's gone with this. Halves pick themselves, although Munster, rib injury. Before Hold on. Before you yep. go any further, before you, let's, yep. let's just talk about Val Holmes, okay? Yep. Val Holmes at one stage there, before he chuffed off to be an NFL player, was probably the best winger in the world. Something happened when he came back and they decided, or he decided, or someone decided he's now a centre. I well, disagree. He got, he, he got a chance at fullback the first, I think what happened, didn't didn't Drinkwater go halfway through early on in the season up to the Cowboys from Melbourne? And that's what basically... I mean, maybe pushed, he did, but Drinkwater pushed, started as a six, if you remember. Yeah, but that, he went to fullback and then Holmes went back into the centres. I think that's the same year. I could be wrong there. Um, I yeah, like I, him as a centre. I like him as a winger. I like him as a fullback. I like Val Holmes. Oh, I think he's a great player. I, I love him as a winger. Yeah. Um, I, I think, I think, you know, in my mind, I, I'd rather see Val Holmes on a wing and bring another centre in that's going to be able to handle the heat of of Trebojevic well, uh, and Latrell. Does Dane Gagai do that? I don't think so. I know he's done a job for him in the past, but I just love the matchup of Tommy or Latrell versus Gagai, regardless of what he's mm. done in the past for Queensland. I love the matchup because mm. I don't think he's a good mm. defender. Um, you play mm. Capewell in the centres. He can't move at the moment. He's barely getting. No, through. no, I, I get that. I get so that. Who do you but... pick? Who do you pick if you're Queensland? Yeah. I'd have to see the list before I make that decision. That, but... that says everything you need to know. If there's not someone that comes straight to mind for you. That what about means Branko Lee? Oh, Branko, I'll give hey, Valance. Bring Valance back in. After one game of <laughs> first right. grade, let's get to your halves. Come on. Okay, Munster with a rib injury. He's openly admitted. So, uh, Junior Paulo, you've got one job, bud. Oh, we're in. Go hard. Go straight for the ribs. And I'd David be giving Terry that to, to, to Vita. To Vita. Well, to Vita's not going to be on the field long enough. He'll be on. Honestly, to Vita will probably be there for one set of six and then he'll have to go off for a break. No, he, he's going to be on for 20 minutes, gonna, but oh, it's going to be entertaining. Love it. Uh, halves picked themselves. There was no question about it. Uh, the only thing that I guess was potentially up in the air was whether they went away from Ponga. They decided Reese Walsh wasn't ready and they moved. Munster to pull back and put Benny Hunt in the halves, which I guess is still an option if if Reece Walsh gets a bit dear in the headlights in the in the game. Uh, we talked about the front row being Flegler and Collins. Who do you think actually comes off the bench and starts if neither of those two, or one, only geez, one of those two starts? If only one of them starts, well, Tino yeah. comes on. Yeah. But if both don't start, I, I'd I'd be I'd be really surprised not to see Tino and Cotter play mm. in the first twenty. Um, Cotter proved last year he's got. He's got all he needs to be a first 20-minute play in that first bash him up 20 minutes. No problem in the world for Cotter. So, look, maybe they're just placeholders. Maybe he's just playing games. Maybe he thinks they can do the job. But I don't think they're your, your starting front rows if you want to get on the front foot. I like what Queensland have done with the depth of their pack for this game. Their bench, as you say, any of those could start. Like any of them. Hmm. Grant, Tino, Cotter, Arrow. Arrow has been playing really well for South of late. Uh, Gilbert has been playing lock slash prop. He's now on an edge. Mm. Will we see that? I I wouldn't rule out. I'm gonna throw it out here. Tino and Fafita on the edges to start the game. Yeah, because I yeah, actually think Tino would happily. I'd happily play Tino on the on the edge, and you can mm. start Arrow in the middle. You can start Cotter in the middle. You've got options, and the other thing that that this allows Queensland to do is that when Ben Hunt is done at nine, he can move to thirteen. And Carrick can mm. go up to prop if you want to do it that way. Yeah. So I think what Queensland have done in the pack, you had to move on from Kafusi regardless of whether he was suspended. He's and he's got the angry pills. He's he's basically he's now paying for everything he did at Melbourne, essentially, and got away with it. He's getting targeted massively, and he's helping not helping his cause by sm- smashing blokes in the head. 
Uh, Nanai is the other one that was there last year off the bench. Uh, he's suspended, so he's missing game one. It'll be interesting to see whether they win or lose, whether they actually make room for Nanai. Because I think what they've got from a back row point of view is pretty much spot on with Queensland. So mm. uh, I've got no issues there. And then, uh, you know, you've got Harry Grant there to sub in for, for Benny Hunt. I prefer that if I'm Queensland. I think you let Harry Grant set out the first 20 minutes of getting um, targeted yep. defensively and, and then come on. So Dearden and Welch are the extra players. Are you surprised Welch didn't make the bench? I am actually. Um, probably, you know, but but who do you leave out? Uh, unless you leave out Flagler. Flagler, um, yeah. or Collins. Uh, and I know Collins yeah, played for I, Australia, but I don't think his form has been very good this year. Mm. My my biggest thing with this team is, have, have we heard any more about Tino's uh, cocked Forearm yesterday. Is it let me sweet? let me go to Twitter. It's about ten o'clock on Monday. We're recording this, people, so it should be out just about now. I I, I have no doubt. Oh, and as as we open up Twitter, a thousand dollar fine. Yeah, a what grade one dangerous contact. So fine. So that's probably a thousand bucks. Yeah. Okay. So so we're sweet to do it. We're sweet to do it. We're going to see a lot of these coming coming up, mate. I mean, well, this is where the NRL lets itself down. You know, we're going to get to the, we will get to the refereeing and the, the officialdom in the end of this podcast. But uh, this is where they let themselves down. That, you know, I hate the word, the C word, but consistency. You know, there is just, there's just none of it. Because I will guarantee you that in four or five rounds' time, if someone like Radley does the same thing, he'll probably get sent, even yeah, though he didn't I, I, the other no, night. No, hang we'll on, get no, to that. Cocksmith. He's yeah, he's suspended for four weeks. It won't happen in the next couple of weeks. It'll have to happen well, in five or six. It might happen in five weeks. Huh? So you know, like anyway, let's move on. Um, <laughs> what else have we got? So yeah, Chris, I, I think I, Christian Walsh is, is Christian Walsh. Sorry, is, yep. is probably a little bit unlucky, but anything can happen in camp. And Tommy Didden is there as a spare half. That's to round out their eight and a nineteen. Yeah, uh, in case there's an injury to to Hunt or Cherry or Munster or Reese Walsh, um, that's what. Tommy Dearden's doing that. If we were ever going to put money on anything, it was the fact that Tino wasn't getting any weeks at all. And that's just the way that the uh, uh, the few things have been going that's... around <laughs> in regards to all that. But one of the great things about the fine system is that at the end of the year, the NRL can sit down and say, lease suspensions in a full season. That's what they can say. You know, moving forward, you know, ticking all those boxes. Ah, anyway. Um, quickly, just finally on Queensland. Capewell, Gagai. They any chance of playing Origin again? Oh yeah, yeah. They, I think they are. Okay. I think they are. Um, because we think Bonner will come back at some stage, whether it's six. It'll or just five. depend on injuries, you know, like yeah. any kind of injuries. I don't think we're going. I honestly, unless there's a, a couple of key injuries there, I don't think we're going to see Ponga this year. I don't. I don't think. What about what Billy about wants... the bench? Would he? Would he? If if they get to game three and it's one one, or even game two and they've lost game one significantly. See, the reason I think Walsh got in for this game is the threat of the old HIA, which shouldn't be influencing how you pick, but it is the way it works. Because if you'd pick Ponga at fullback, you almost had to pick Welsh on the bench as cover if yeah. Ponga went down. So that yeah. leaves you... And that, and that's where we've, we've discussed. The, the makeup of the bench for Queensland is really good. So if you take any of those guys out to have to put Welsh on there to cover Ponga, you sort of... Well, you, you, you can't. Match. You'd have to you'd, you'd have to lose Harry Grant. You'd have to you lose your little. Oh, you'd lose. You'd lose a you'd... cutter or an arrow or whatever, surely. Or you're not going to play. You're not going to play Origin. You're not playing Origin with two forwards on the bench. Yeah, that's interesting. So yeah. that's that's the, the situation for Queensland. Uh, Billy, I'll watch the rest of the presser after we've done the pod. But um, yeah, the, the decision for Ponga to be left out is a, as much about Reese Walsh's form as it is Ponga's um, last year. He, he 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 got he got sparked on the weekend on, on and he was he got rattled. On a on a friendly fire to the back of the head. That's what that was. That wasn't that wasn't a front on one. That yeah. was his mate with the left arm across the back of the head. And rugby league physical people. It can happen. It's just the problem is if you've had it happen a few times, it, it's the way our bodies are made. Surely, it's somewhat predisposed that if you cop a little knock, it might you know be accentuated. So I'm not a mm. doctor or anything like that, but that's you see it. You just see it. Jeez, uh, you look go. like a doctor with that mustache, mate. <laughs> Yes, I'll see you now, sir. Could you take go in and take your pants? All right. Um, okay, New South Wales. <laughs> Just cough. <laughs> cough me with you, Rob. Um, <laughs> New South Wales' team for game one. Mm. We exchanged some text messages, Cocksmith. Um, we did. I was wrong with one. I was wrong with who, one. Who has been – and I'm going to go back to this. Mm. I'm Tommy's number one fan. I mean, he's number one advocate. 
Yep. I'm so relieved this morning that your mail wasn't 100% correct and that Tommy is in the side because yep. I would be sitting here right now and I, would, I wouldn't want to do the podcast. I'd be saying Queenslander specials. He's that important. He just is simply that important <clears throat> in, our, in our team. I'm so happy he's there. That, that game yesterday afternoon sealed it. I mean, mm. could, to show that he could run at very close to full pace um, sealed it. I, my mail... Which is usually pretty good. Yeah, oh, no, had, I, I know, I know the mail. Had, had Tommy out um, with Campbell Graham playing right centre. Um, Campbell Graham's still there, and he's not there for for yeah, you know, fun. But let's let's boil it down to the Campbell Graham versus Tom Trebojevic situation. One is playing really good football. Fine, scoring tries. Played in the wing for Australia last year at the World Cup. He doesn't win your games. He doesn't win your games. He's a really good player, but he's not a match winner. Teacher Boyovich mm-hmm. is a match winner. We win sure. often when he's there, and you can't Com- leave that out. Comparatively, yes. If, you can, if, yeah. if he can walk, you can't leave him out. So, okay. well, let, well, not, well, let's let's go on though, and let's yep. name the one through eighteen. We know who the eighteen is, and we've got a high suspicion on who the one through seventeen is. Yeah. So, so the only real in flux situation here, I think, is the back row, two edge back row spots. Uh, and we'll get to them as we go. But here is what we think the team will run out 1-17, to 17, or at least get named um, on Wednesday or Thursday or something this week. James Tedesco at fullback, Josh Adokar and Brian Toto on the wings, Latrell Mitchell and Tom Draboyevich in the centres. Let's just stop and admire that delicious back line <laughs> which for two seconds before we get to the roadblock at six. Uh, mm. It's such a nice feeling looking at that again, isn't it? Like, that is just... Oh, it, doesn't get, it doesn't get much better than that at... Well, like Australian on, level, mate, alone. on its like, day, that's the Australian back five. Yeah, um, it's really it's still except Tyo plays for Samoa, so um, <laughs> you know. But it's it's fairly close to the Australian back five. Uh, if they're if they're all ninety percent plus fit, um, we're in with a great shot just on that back five. And this is where Josh Adokar comes into his own. People is that he's playing outside Latrell. Yeah, he's got speed. He can turn those half chances into four pointers, and that's where yep. you'll notice the difference of him. I'm gonna, I went on record last year. I'll say it again. He wouldn't have helped us. He, we wouldn't have won Origin last year just because he was in the side. But I'm much happier that he's there this year um, with the Me quality too. that's inside him. Uh, the yep. six is Jerome Luai. You didn't have him in the team for what you'd been informed. My mate. How, how do you uh... feel? How do you feel about him him getting another chance? Because it feels. Very much like they've gone, oh, he's done the job before, eh, maybe. Uh, and they've gone, oh, combinations, et cetera, et cetera, with Cleary. Simple question, is it the right decision? That I, I can't answer that. I'll tell you after the game whether it's the right <laughs> decision or not. But, yeah. but I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not as disappointed in that, as I would be if Trebojevic didn't play. Yeah. Um, yep. He, yep. 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 I'm 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 okay with it because at club level they're still doing the business. And and yep. Lou, I did have a, a pretty strong game. Uh, Two weeks ago, he week played outstandingly. Last. last week, he was okay. Uh, but yeah, he. I don't. I'm on the same. But if if Luai is passing to Latrell, we get a good Luai. We do. Yeah. It's a matter yep. of who plays on the left edge to to defend for Luai. I want Nico Hines there because I think he makes the team stronger because he gives you a second kicking option. He gives you a guy who is going to hang, hunt around the ball looking for things to happen and to, to build. Luai's game is either shovel it onto your edge really quickly or step back inside. That seems to be the only two options he's got. And he doesn't come in and doesn't... Because that's the way that Penrith play. He's clear he dominates the kicking. He kicks 19 out of the 20 kicks of the game. Clearly. That's yeah. how it works. Yeah. And and my concern with that is you get to Origin and the first half could be over and Luai's touched the ball three times. That's that's just the way he plays. Mm. Hines is not going to let the game get through him like that. Now, I don't think it's a negative on Nathan Cleary if you've got Hines playing that way. But I guess the big question, this is the reason that you look at last year's series even two years ago, three years ago, sorry. Nathan Cleary, when he's needed to be the dominant player for us, in game in the series that we've lost, he hasn't been the guy, has he, Coxman? Let's be perfectly blunt. No, he, he there's been times where clearly he hasn't hasn't mm. uh, taken that that extra step and been on the top level. But uh, you know, 
we can we can always we can always look at the bloke in the seven or the six and go, you're the reason why we lost. Mm. Whereas really, it's really the guys beyond the seven jersey, uh, you know, in the eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen that should be, you know, they they're the ones that 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 create the platform. Cleary can only do what he can do. You know, like I know there's a few players in the past, like uh, Ricky Stewart and Alan Langer and Andrew Johns, Bailey, that could, uh, origin level, yeah, yeah, that could turn a game without the forwards doing the platform. But, you know, <clears throat> we're, we're talking about a, a fairly young guy, Nathan Cleary, who, who didn't yeah. start playing rugby league until he was 14 or 15 years old. He played soccer before that. And and he's still learning his craft. And I'm not making excuses for him. He, he is the chosen one. He's the one mm-hmm. that New South Wales have, have pinned everything on. Um, but at the same time, the forwards have to really lay that platform and, and protect him on the kicks and blah, blah, blah. Um, just to, on your point about Luai, yep. I, I I think about Hines and, and and I think that he and Cleary are very similar in players, although Cleary is probably the bigger kicker of the two. Hines is a shorter kicker. Um, Cleary still has a really good short mm. kick. But Actually, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think, I think uh, what I think Freddie's done here, he's just gone, look, Luai hasn't done enough for me to ditch him. Mm. And Hines is nipping at his heels. So I'd, I'd like to bring them both in and see what happens in the heat of the game. Because I, I can't see Hines, I can't see Luai getting hooked. I can. The only thing that I, I, I can can't see, it see happening that in game one. Or, I can see it happening in game one. Uh, Absolutely. It won't. What I can see happening is Hines coming on with 10 minutes to go in the first half as either a substitute for Coruscant and or Luai goes to nine and plays the dummy half. Mm. That's, they'll all play together. Uh, unless there's an injury, Hines, okay. Cleary, and and Lua will all be on the, the field at the same time. And to give Horace right. our right. break right. at, yeah. at 30 minutes, that's what I think is going to happen. And I think Lua is the one that's got to go to nine, as you say. I don't think you. you well, know. maybe maybe that's maybe that's what's going to happen. I, I'm not sure, but if that's the team that you know that we've got down here, that's what I think will happen. Let's go to the forwards. Yeah, we've, the forwards yeah, we've, are, we've, the we've forwards are delicious. On halfback. The quickly quick thing on Cleary, I wanted to point out. I'm not disagreeing with your recitation about the middles having to do stuff. It's just that I felt like, especially last year, I thought our middles did all right. And when it came to coming up with big plays, particularly with kicking game, Cleary was found wanting in that game three last year. Okay. Well, like, that's, in, 20, so, that's 20, yeah. 22. Let's, let's, let's go to 23. 22. All right. The forward pack, Payne Haas, he's up at prop. Horace Sowers at hooker. Uh, there was going to be Jake Trebojevic apparently at prop. He's now out because he had mm. calf soreness coming back from a calf injury. Oh, did he? Game yesterday, so that's why okay. he pulled out. Uh, so I expect Junior Paulo to probably, uh, Barlow, sorry, to come in at prop. Then mm. the big question is who's on the edges? Because there's two guys that should be there, which is Cameron Murray and Liam Martin. But have you been watching the Panthers the last couple of weeks and seeing the role Liam Martin's been playing, Foxman? I like it. I'd I like, like it. it much better than on the edge. Give him in the middle. Mm. No, because I like he's, it. He's tough. I actually think Penrith should stick with it as well because I think Hosking's been doing a good job for him outside Cleary on that edge. And Agreed. Martin, when he's in the game, is a weapon. And I actually yeah. didn't think... He had some moments in Origin last year, but he felt like as the longer the game went, the less impact he had. I like the idea... He was playing, of him, on, the, he was playing on the right edge, wasn't he? He was playing on the right... Year. Yeah. I actually like the idea yeah. of him coming off the bench almost as that middle impact guy and just going crazy. So mm. I... I have a feeling it could be Karen Murray and Frizzell starting and then Isaiah Yeo at lock. The reason I think Murray has to start, and a few people have pointed this out uh, through WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp, et cetera, he doesn't run the ball anymore when he's playing at South. He's the link man. He's been the, he's been the second halfback or the main halfback since Adam Reynolds has left. I've pointed this out to you many times. And he like catches and passes, and, and, but he doesn't run the ball as much as he used to. To me, the Murray that we know and love is a guy who can beat guys with footwork and, you know, run lines. And he yeah. did this for, for Australia when he came on last year. I don't like the idea of him coming off the bench and having to play at 13 and pushing Yo to prop because we need an edge. <laughs> and yeah. I don't think he can start Hudson Young in that first game of origin. Mm-hmm. I think he's got to come off the bench. So I would have Cam Murray and Frizzell starting. Uh, and then Yo at uh, lock the bench. Nico Hines. Then I'd have Liam Martin, Hudson Young, and Tavita Pango Jr. has come from the clouds uh, in for Jakey. Let's start on Tavita because I think it needs to be discussed. 
I don't hate it. I don't hate it, he, but he's going to either be rock or diamond. You know that. Yeah. That's the way Tavita is. He's either going to be the hero of the show uh, or one of the heroes of the show or the guy that gets dropped first. That's what's mm. going to happen. Um, How many minutes over or under 15 for the game? He'll go over. I'd, I'd say all up, you'll play 20 minutes. Okay. 20 and to 25. Is there a world In where Farlow comes off the bench and Pangai starts? You, no. No, I only think, because yeah. I think Pangai's too unpredictable. Anything could happen. He could get sent off. Well, could I, would, sent I would use him. I'd bring him on <clears> in the last 10 minutes before half time. Give him a break. Yeah. Then use him for the first 10 after. And yeah. that's the end. Unless, unless you needed to bring him on at the end of the match, that's where you use him. Because his second yeah. phase is what he's been picked for. He's been picked for his offload. Yeah. So that, to me, there's no yeah, point I'm... having him start because he's not going to put the offload. He's not going to use the offload because he can get told, put it away. You mm-hmm. want him coming in when, you know, the um, Queensland forwards are potentially a little bit more tired and they're not being able to wrap him up around the top. So that, yeah. and that's where a guy like Tedesco and Trebojevic and uh, Coruscant are huge for us because they've got to hunt around Tank yeah. if he's on the field. Um, something that, you, uh, tell, tell me, Bulldogs tell me about your... Doing. Tell me about your thoughts on Coruscant for instead of Cook. I mean, Coruscant is an incumbent. Um, yep. I get it. But Cook, do you reckon he's got a reason to be a little bit paid off for this? He's, he's been, been good. playing great. He's, he's, he's been really good this year, but t- Freddie tipped his hand last year, mate. The moment he got brought on to start, was it game two last year? It was, wasn't it? Mm. Made the change. Um, he's all in on the Penrith combo. And mm. unfortunately, okay. he's decided that Cook can't play another role for us apart from Hooker. And I really like Damien Cook. I think he was hard done by. We we covered this off at length at last year's uh, World Cup pods. But I get it. The good news for um, Damien Cook is if something happens to Coruscant, he's the first one back in. I don't see him going to Robson or someone like that. I think he'll no, be no, no. back. No. So don't give up hope, Damien. But I with Nico on the bench, there's there's just not going to be room for him. So. I get it. Do you think? Uh, yeah. Do you think Cook? Do you think Cook will go to to the camp this week for a couple of days? Do you no, think because he'll be South, in camp? no, because South are playing this round. So okay. that also means that Campbell Graham, as eighteenth man, won't be eligible to play for South this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and New South Wales yes. only picked eighteen. They said they were going to pick nineteen, but I'm assuming with the uh, Trebojevic, um injury, they decided to go oh, with yeah. eighteen. Uh, if if Trebojevic Chibor- if was there, who would have been 19th out of that? Do you oh, reckon, Pangai. Do you reckon Pangai. Or, or Hudson Pangai. Young, actually. Hudson Young, at a guess. I actually I have a feeling that he would have been brought in as an experience for the camp and then possibly used in yeah. game two. Uh, let's talk about yeah. the snubs apart from Cook. I don't think there's anything. Like, just quickly, what would have you started with on the edges? Who's your back, two starting back rowers? My two starting back rowers from this mob would be Murray and Frizzell. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the snubs, Damien Cook. No good. Angus yep. Crichton got basically dropped by Trent Robinson. Hasn't by done years. enough. But he got, Hasn't he got done enough. He didn't get used for 60 minutes in the game against the Dragons. That's a Doesn't beautiful way to make sure you get your player uh, for your club football. Uh, Stephen Crichton, rightly not nowhere near it. Uh, Matt Burton, I thought there was an outside chance he might have been 19th man. And there's a, I actually would hazard a guess that if they bring a 19th man in, it'll be Burton. And the reason for that is that the Bulldogs have the bye this week and Burton can play about 7,000 positions if they ever decided to draft him in. So I would, I'm going to take a stab there. Talakai is the other one that was there in game three. Jacob Sofidi was also there and they were both gone as well. In terms of a snub, I haven't seen much that says you have to pick me, but I thought Daniel Sofidi might have been there instead of Pangai Jr. Yeah. Because he has done the job for New South Wales in the past. He's been a factor. But, but he, yeah, I know, but he, he doesn't have that explosive hand grenade style yeah. about him. That I think Freddie Freddie will be looking to bring Pangai on as a change maker, as something to you know, build a mini platform on. That's the way I, I'd be using Pangai. Yeah. Bring him on, make sure he doesn't get sent off, make sure he hurts <laughs> some people, gets in their ribs, make sure he stomps over some top of some people, then get him off and yeah. let him sit down and drink a beer or whatever. Um, the, other, the other two. I, I, can't, I can't see too many snubs. I no, no, uh, the other two from the series that were healthy, that weren't picked from last year is Katani Staggs and Tarek Sims, who's playing Queensland Cup. Injuries who weren't available, Daniel Tupu, Ryan Madison and Ryan, uh, Regan Campbell-Gillard, who would have been there had he been fit. I, I don't have much mm. doubt 
about that. And obviously, Jack Whiten retired. We're running out of time on the initial Zoom here, Cocksmith, so we need to, you know, put our money where our mouth is. I think you said 3-0 New South Wales in the preseason predictions. No, that's just me. That's just me being an idiot. <laughs> I said 2-1, That's, I that's think. what I want. <laughs> uh, I like our team more than Queensland's, but I will say I like Queensland's team. Well, they've got a good team. I, I think what I look at what Billy's doing there is he's gone, I need to win the series. I don't need to defend it. And that's the Billy Slater mentality. Uh, mm. Freddie, I have a feeling, maybe had one sleep doctor's phone muted across the weekend because I don't see many <laughs> sleep doctor selections here. I really don't. Mm. Like, So what you're saying is Brad Fittler had his phone muted to Greg Alexander. <laughs> Why? Who is this? Who, would you, who, do, who do you think Greg Alexander would ha- have chosen if he had his way? Completely. Give me oh. two. Honestly, I reckon he would have picked Burton on the bench. Right. Like on those 18, mm. at the 18, he would have been in the squad. And mm. that's and maybe Stephen Crichton, because he loves Stephen Crichton. Yeah, see, I'm I'm not totally sure. Mate, the thing about Burton. I'm being, I'm being facetious, think, obviously. I know, but I think I think with Burton, I think Burton is probably one of the best centers in the world. Mm. Right. And unfortunately, they've got him playing in seven at the moment because they have to. Uh he's doing nothing. He's doing Nothing. Uh, the sooner they can get a proper halfback there, even if it, what's Flano doing? I'm honestly, they're better with Flanagan. They are better, better with Flanagan at seven and Burton at six. Funny, um, the, but the takeaway from that game yesterday is that when Burton decided they wanted to play, the Bulldogs looked good. He just took yeah, but, he, he, but he's not a half. To, it took forever to get in, into the game. It's just ah, anyway. Look, we won't go into yeah. club football for a moment because this just be an origin centric mm-hmm. pod. Um, I'll talk to you in a sec about the other part of it. Uh, but right now, I'm like in New South Wales. I think we've got four tries in this, Cocksmith. How many tries does Queensland have in them? Uh, I think they've got four as well. Ooh. I, I do think that. It, look, the, the biggest issue for Queensland will be, <clears throat> like Cameron Munster is, a, is an X factor. Reese Walsh is an X factor. And if they fire, if they, if they start, you know, really, really peppering New South Wales, it's going to be hard to stop them. Um mm. They got they got Selwyn on a wing. I don't like their centres much, um, yep. but I, I like their I like Selwyn, Reese, Munster, Daly, Cherry Evans, um, Ben Hunt will be solid. Their forwards are going to lay a, a pretty good platform if they get the combination right. It's going to be tight, mate. It's going to be tight. I think four points in the first game. So what do you, I've got? A, I'll, I'll go a very generic score, but I think four tries to three for New South Wales. So I got twenty four eighteen to the Blues. I'm going to say the score will be 2016. Nice. That's what I think. Well, there you go, people. There's our reaction. And I think, to... and I, yep. And sorry. And I think New South Wales will win 2 1. Okay. Uh, I'm, oh, stop it. I know you said that your thing was a preseason prediction. 3 0 New South Wales. Oh, there. Stop it. Yeah, they are. <laughs> the moustache has made him silly. Silly earth. <laughs> We're going to win. We're going to win running away. Um, going to conquer Adelaide. Well, Tommy. We'll go to well, Brisbane. We'll, we'll win in Brisbane. We'll get beaten in Sydney. There you go. Nah. Three will will Tommy time. play all three games? He better. I'll get him out there. I'll get him out there in, um, I don't know, crutches if we need to. Uh, he's that okay. important for us. Uh, the place that I think Queensland have an advantage is potentially in the forwards. I really like, and I like our forward pack. I really do. I think Queensland is a little bit deeper than ours. Uh, so to me, it's mm-hmm. a big factor is how does Freddie use. Cam Murray and Isaiah Yo, I don't think they play the same position. I don't want to see that. I want to see defined things so that they're on the field as, as long as we can we can have them. Uh, that's episode 292 of Not the Footy Show, our Origin 1 team reaction. I like both the sides. I love this time of year. Mm. What what Me else too. is what else is uh <laughs> we'll, we'll talk about uh, we'll do another podcast just in a second, guys, because um Coxmith wants to talk about <laughs> refereeing. How good is it going? Uh, but we'd love to hear what you thought of the teams. If you want to, uh, I think to I think we'll leave. Let's leave the referees to later in the week. Sounds good. Um, Thank you. <laughs> because because I need to get some more evidence. Some more. Yeah. I need to go back through some games and. Uh, uh, we need we need a, a video from uh, Teflon and Azali about what and what isn't a forearm to the head when mm. you're carrying the ball. Yeah, we just got to find out what's legal there with that because if that's I know that they've given him a grade one, but. 
you know, if you run straight at a, a little hooker who you suspect might have just done a hip drop, but you peed oh, off because back. he didn't get 100%. sin bin. 100%. When you run straight at him, you look at him in the eyes, you cock an elbow, and you thrust it in his face. If that's, mate, if that's not a grade two, I'm not here. But anyway, anyway. I, I've got a, a bit of evidence uh, gathering, and then we'll uh, well, unload. The, 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 the underscore of all that, and it'll come up in the next pod, but Shao Nine. I gave old PVL and Teflon a call, and I said, "We don't want any sin bins for Origin because it ruins the TV product." Guarantee, Someone said something. Guarantee something like that was said because we have seen all the sin bins disappear, and yeah. unsurprisingly, yeah. Origin just around the corner. They've turned the sin bin tap off for the week. So anyway, you know, all right, that's episode two ninety two. That's been Rob Cox. I've been Warwick Nicholson with this glorious moustache. Take it in, <laughs> and uh, we will speak to you uh, later in the week uh, as we gear into Origin week for twenty twenty three. Enjoy, Cogsmith. Sweet. Catch you later, mate. Hope to see. Not the footy show. Show? We are one different. Yep. What do you got? Canberra aren't making the finals this year. Oh, stop it. I'm hanging up. I've got to go, mate. The bars <laughs> are calling me. The honky tonks are playing my tune. What What are you talking about? Not the footy show. Show? You've been sleeping over there. Pepsi.